Hello friends, this is Sanjeev Kaushik and welcome to my channel Methodical Trades. The one challenge that beginner traders often face is they've got absolutely no idea of different styles of trading, right? So they will mix and match intraday trading with swing, swing with positional and uh, sometimes they will do scalping. However, keep on with that particular position for hours and hours and even days. So the thing is they neither know the candle time frames that they should adhere to and also they don't know the different styles of trading, right? So in this video, we'll talk about a lot of things related to four different styles of trading. We will especially focus upon the time frames. What should be the time frame of your candles, right? What should be the time frame of your charts? And while you're looking at a certain time frame of candles on the chart, what should be your view? How long should you carry that position? How should you find out your profit targets and your stop losses because you're looking at, let's say, daily candle, weekly candle and so on. And what's the meaning of looking at different charts on different time frames? And also eventually, what kind of a trading is it that you should stick to based on what kind of a person you are, how much time you have, are you a full time trader, are you a part time trader and so on. Right. So this video is going to be extremely, extremely helpful if you're a beginner. Let's get started. Positional trading. This is the kind of trading that I do most often across US markets because US markets usually close early in the morning. I stay in Australia and therefore I only get to trade on a positional basis. Now, what is positional trading? And you might have heard people saying you will have to keep a positional view on that particular stock. I have this target, but I have positional view on it. So what does positional mean? Positional trading means you are going to carry your trade at least three months. You can go as long as say one year. However, when you are taking a trade with a positional view in mind, and I'll also talk about what do we mean by positional view, then your time frame in mind should be that you are going to keep this position open for at least three months. Now, whether your profit levels would arrive early or later is definitely a second aspect. First and foremost, what should be your view? Okay. Now, if you have to keep a view of at least three months and you have to go say as long as one year, then what should be the time frame of the candles that you would be looking at? You should only look at the weekly charts. So if you are trading, looking at candles or bars or whatever, then the size of each of them should be one week. How the weekly candles are found is the starting is from Monday and the closing is from the Friday. When would you enter into this trade? Ideally, do not enter on Mondays, Tuesday or Wednesdays, right? In 90% of the cases, I would say do not enter on the first three days because by the time first three days have gone, the candles will start maturing. If you are waiting for a certain breakout because you have to go long, then by the time Thursday and Friday arrives, you will have very high confidence on whether this breakout is actually a breakout or is it a false breakout, right? So in 90% of the cases, you will wait till Thursday, Friday. Sometimes you would think that maybe it's not worth waiting. You can take the trade on Mondays, Tuesdays as well. but if you're taking trade on Monday, I mean, I think you're really entering into a trade prematurely. Let the candle first mature itself and then you should take the trade. So Thursdays, Fridays are ideal. Most of my trades I take on the close of the Friday session, right? So close of the Friday session in US means Saturday early morning for me. Saturday early morning is when I visit all my positional trades. Wherever the stop losses have hit, I would exit. Wherever target levels have arrived, I would book my profits. And for the other remaining trades, I would just see how is it going on on the weekly chart. That's what I do one day prior on all my positions that are only taken from a positional view in mind. If you took a positional view, right, you were looking at weekly candles, then your targets should also be proportionately high, right? You're not trading on a positional basis just to take two, three, five percent on an asset, right? And usually the breakouts that you see on weekly charts, they do not really give you results immediately. It will be very, very rare where you will get your profits in, let's say, one week or 
within a few days. I'm not saying that this is impossible. It has happened with me when my positions have reached my profit targets within days, but it's extremely rare, right? Extremely, extremely rare. And if it's happening too often with you while you are carrying, let's say, positional view and your targets are coming in really quickly, right? Then maybe you are keeping your targets a little too low. Consider widening your target levels as well. One thing that is extremely tricky with positional trading is that you will have to be very cautious about your position sizing. And the reason for that is while your targets are really wide, so are your stop losses. Because you are trading on weekly candles, the stop losses would automatically be wider. So make sure that you are doing your risk management properly while doing positional trading. You should be doing your risk management properly anyway, right? Regardless of your style of trading, but it becomes even more important when you are doing positional trading because your stop losses are wider than any other style of trading. When you are keeping a positional view, then you should not keep more than five trades open in your account. The only exception is if you only trade with a positional view, let's say you are a time poor trader and you only trade on weekly as a result and you can only track charts, let's say once or twice in a week, you're that busy. Then the exception would be you can carry as high as eight trades at a time, but no more than that. And of course, do not lose more than 2% of your capital on a single trade. So your stop losses would be such that you should not lose more than 2% of your capital. When it comes to positional trading, sometimes you will wait till the close of the candle before you make sure that the entry signals have arrived and also the exit signals have arrived. This is very important because a weekly candle will take five days to form. It doesn't mean that if let's say our stop loss levels have arrived, then we will take our position off. No. You should wait till the close of that candle. Again, let the candle mature. So we will exit our position due to the result of stop loss on Thursdays or Fridays, right? You should be 100% sure that fine, the trade was wrong and now the stop loss levels have arrived and I will have to exit. So you must exit. I'm not saying that sit with the hope that the price would reverse, no but you must exit when the stop loss levels have been confirmed. However, on a target side, it doesn't matter, right? Just put in your uh, desired targets. And if that desired targets have arrived, you will get an exit, right? Because you had put in a GTC order, which is good till canceled order. And with some brokers, you can put your GTC orders forever. With others, they would put usually um, time limit for which your order would remain good, say three months and so on. So you will have to go back and revisit if you're still in that position, right? One last thing is, as I said, you should be exiting at the stop loss levels arriving and you should wait till Thursday or Fridays. Sometimes you would see that your stop loss levels are at let's say X level and your breakdown of that particular candle has gone to even lower, which means you would end up losing more than what you initially thought you would lose if your stop loss levels would arrive. So make sure that you are taking care of these really smaller things associated with trading, but they would have huge impact on your overall return in the long run. Okay, so this is about positional trading. The other kind of trading is swing trading, where we try to capture small swings on an asset on either side. In positional trading, we try to capture the longer trend, but in swing trading, we can go long as well as short, regardless of what the overall trend is. What should be your time frame? Swing trading can be done for anywhere from four to five days to up to three months. But if your view has gone to three months, you would not really call it a swing trading. It is also not really positional technically. So if your trade has lasted, let's say more than seven days, right? It has gone on for two weeks, three weeks, and you're still in profits, you're trailing your stop losses, and if it would go on for, let's say, three months, it would sit somewhere between swing trading and positional trading. However, the only thing that would still be common, and that's why this time frame of up to three months would still be classified under swing trading is the time frame of candles. Regardless of whether you are going to carry your position for one week or for three months, you would always trade on a daily candle. So if you are looking at a daily candle chart, it would automatically imply that your time frame is anywhere from one week to 
three months. When would you enter? Same thing at the close of the candle, right? And similarly, when would you exit? You would exit just before the close of the candle to make sure that your stop loss levels have arrived properly. So what I always do is I keep my profit target orders always in GTC, but I never enter my stop loss orders. I exit all my positions manually so that I know that this trade has gone wrong and now I am exiting from it. So good things can happen while you were sleeping, but bad things, if that were to happen, you should be the one executing them. Threshold count, exactly same as positional trades, right? If you do only swing trading, then you can go as high as eight trades in your account. But if you do other kinds of trading as well, then do not keep more than five trades open in your account and do not lose more than 2% of your capital in a single trade. Next is intraday trading. This is where most of the beginners go wrong more often. What should be your time frame? You see, just like I said that there is a bit of a buffer between positional and swing, right? Where we still classified that into swing trading, right? Because swings usually last for just one to two weeks. However, the time frame between two weeks to three months is still covered in swing trading style. Similarly, even on intraday as well, there is a bit of a gray area between intraday and swing. So let me just talk about that one first. You might have seen people trading on one hour chart, four hour chart, um, and you might be wondering what should be the time frame for these candle styles. When your time frame is strictly up to a week, it can be less than that. It can be two to three days, right? Then your time frame should be one hour candle. 30 minutes is acceptable. When you go for four hour candles, usually your time frame should go anywhere from three to four days to seven days, right? And I find these time frames to be useful only when you are a trader with a decent bit of experience under your belt, right? If you're really a beginner, then do not switch to 30 minutes, one hour, four hours, because these time frames are really tricky especially because they fall in that gray area. You would often have difficulties in identifying proper stop losses and proper targets if you are trading in that gray area, right? Now let me talk about the proper way of doing intraday trading where you're strictly going to close your position within that day, right? That's the obvious definition of intraday. The candle time frame would be 10 minutes or 15 minutes, preferably 10 minutes, all right? When would you enter? Of course, at the close of the candle, you will hold intraday, ideally no more than one to two hours, right? And if you get your profit target in the next candle or the candle after, just exit, right? Stop losses would also depend upon the 10 minute candles. And of course, we would exit either when the profit targets have arrived or when the stop loss levels have arrived. How many trades should you take in a day? No more than eight to 10 trades. On a very, very good day, you should be taking 10 trades, right? In fact, the good thing would be you take two trades in the morning, right? And do not open a third trade unless one of these two trades have closed. So at any given point in time, make sure that you're not keeping more than two trades open so that you can track them properly. Intraday is really a fast paced game, right? So you do not want too many trades to distract you. So no more than two trades. If you have to take a third trade, just make sure that you are taking a decision on the existing two before taking on the third one. And intraday trading is extremely safe. Some people say that intraday traders cannot make money. However, that's rubbish. In fact, intraday traders have the least amount of risk, obviously no overnight risk. And even intraday as well, usually their profit targets are small and their stop losses are small. So comparatively, they lose less money. So if you're a good intraday trader with good intraday trading system, you can make a whole lot of money without any overnight risk. You will go and sleep peacefully at night. So this is about intraday trading and the smaller brother of intraday trading is scalping where you would only carry your positions for just a few minutes and sometimes seconds. Time frame: you will trade on one minute candle. Some people even go as low as 30 seconds, but I've seen that many successful traders usually stick with one minute candle. 
And of course, the closure of the kennel is when you would enter. With the scalping, you can be slightly more liberal with the entry rule, right? So you can enter right when the uh, breakdown level or the breakout levels have arrived, okay? How long to hold? Yeah, your profit target should be extremely small. Essentially, you're only looking to collect just a few ticks. So um, you're not going to carry your position more than five minutes. Five minutes is the max. When to sell? Of course, when your stop loss levels have arrived or when your targets have arrived, you are going to keep both of them very tight because you want to just enter, exit, enter, exit, enter, exit. Threshold count. This is interesting. A scalping trader can often take as high as two dozen trades in a day. Yes, 24 trades in a day, right? So really, I wouldn't say that there exists an upper cap on uh, the number of trades that you can take when it comes to scalping. However, you would yourself realize if you would ever try scalping, or if you did, then probably you would agree with me that scalping is an altogether different ball game. It requires a very special kind of a skill for people to do scalping successfully. So, in my opinion, those who have uh, actually mastered the art and science of scalping, they should be able to do that profitably. And of course, then they should not limit them to any number of trades. So that 24 number that I shared with you, it is usually an average number of trades that a trader takes. If he's finding more opportunities, he'll go beyond 24. So there are absolutely no limits, but I must caution you that scalping definitely is not a risk-free trading style, right? People can often lose a lot of money while trying to do scalping successfully, especially if you don't really have experience in scalping. So you should train yourself and you should mentally prepare yourself from scalping because more often what happens is if your trade goes into profits right away, you will forget about taking your profits and you will say, okay, fine. I'm going to carry it for another five minutes. Let's see what happens. But that's not how scalping works, right? So with scalping, regardless of where the asset has gone, you will have to be very disciplined with your entries and exits. All right, so this is all that I wanted to cover in this video. Nothing but very practical advice on four styles of trading. You can pick and choose whichever one you want to go with. Now you know the kind of involvement that is required in trading a certain time frame and what should be your view in mind. I've shared all my practical experiences or the things that I've learned from my friends and mentors. I hope this was useful. I'll see you soon.